Uh, so as we talked about, you know, this extended period in space, it can also have an impact on your health, right? And what that looks like when you return to Earth. Yeah, and so joining us this morning to talk about that impact of a prolonged time in space is biomedical engineer Dr. John J. Quish. Dr. J. Quish, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, thanks for having me. This is something that I remember when we, when you know, Scott Kelly was in space, mm -hmm. and we, everybody remembers like he got taller, yeah. right? So that's something that really sticks with us. What are the physical effects of spending almost 300 days in space? So number one, compromised digestion. You huh. don't digest food the same way when you don't have the benefit of the gravitational pull of the earth. So food goes down and if you ever, ever at a barbecue with little kids and they eat something and then they go play on the jungle gym, then they don't feel too good <laughs> because they've been hanging upside down. Yeah. So that's a little bit of what's going on and that's 24 yeah. seven. So they compromise in their digestion and unable to assimilate nutrients into their organs, into their muscle tissue, bone, tendons, and ligaments, all of which are degrading because of the lack of mechanical tension in a zero gravity environment. <clears throat> and wow. thus we have That's that, really yeah, it is, it is fascinating. When they were stepping off the capsule, when they were getting out of the capsule, I was watching them very closely because I was yeah. interested to see, Does were they going help? to help, yeah. can they stand? And so I know, you know, you talk about the, the loss of bone density and the, the muscles atrophying. What might they be feeling physically once they're back on earth, say those first few moments, but then those overnight hours into today? I did a news interview yesterday uh, with on a panel with a former astronaut and his first comment when getting back to Earth was gravity sucks. Yeah, uh, I imagine it feels like a lot of pressure. You get used to a zero gravity environment, then you come back to Earth and and I've heard astronauts just say weird things like the weight of a pencil, like a pencil wow. felt oddly heavy in their hand. So you really lose the ability to <clears throat> coordinate yourself in one gravitational field when you become accustomed to a different or lack of gravitational field. Yeah, I just could imagine that that would just feel so strange. Yeah. And we have known astronauts like Frank Rubio, who spent 371 days in space, the Russian cosmonaut who was up there for 437 days. Were they able to make up for everything that uh, an anti-gravity environment can do with just exercise alone? Or do we need uh, better exercise routines while astronauts are in space? So I'm a little more conservative. I would say that it will take them as long as they were in a zero gravity environment to train their way out of it. So mm -hmm. nine months, mm. but that's conservative if they're able to really push their training. And, and these are astronauts, so they're highly trained, right. very prepared for this type of thing. So I would expect them to recover faster, but uh, you, you, you need to be cautious like yeah. just getting up out of a chair so no no use of your hands a sit to stand is a standard test with deconditioned individuals now they are by all by all matters deconditioned just like a elderly person so um you have to pace their training with their actual capability to keep from injuring them because they're, it's not just their muscles and bone that got weaker, tendons and ligaments also. Yeah, yeah. So they the have to be system. very cautious, and it, it mm -hmm. might take them some time, but it's okay. Yeah. They can do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been talking a lot about their physical conditions, right? What they're, what they're going to expect and, and go through physically. What about their mental health? Great question. So NASA selects, they pre-select astronauts so that they're more likely to be able to handle situations like this. Mm. Then, after they get the best of the best, who they believe will be able to handle it the best, then they train them for scenarios just like this. So if there was such a thing as space tourism and people have been up there for too long, I would worry about their mental health. Uh, mm -hmm. These two, not worried. Okay, okay. Well, what kind of support do you think they're gonna need um, just, I mean, for overall health, both mentally and physically, like how long do you think it's gonna take them to recover? So just from a from a dietary standpoint, they're going to have to go slow with liquids and food. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like, I'm sure people imagine, uh, you know, it's like Thanksgiving dinner when they get home. No, uh, they can have small amounts of fluid. 
mm. probably high in electrolytes, so magnesium, potassium, sodium. <clears throat> they um, are going to slowly reintroduce food. They're going to have to focus on nutrient dense food like animal proteins, so that uh, because their stomachs have shrunk oh. while being up there, so they need to focus on on things with the most nutrients with the lowest weight. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. It is fascinating. Yeah. It's really, really it's fascinating. Well, Dr. John Jayquish, thank you so much for joining us with this perspective this morning. Thank we you. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. I love that. It was. It was so neat.